All right, Nan Elpers, uh, welcome to the Rusty Satellite Show. It's uh, very rare to have a high school student on, on the show, but welcome. I'm sure it is, Rick. Thank mm -hmm. you for having me. Uh, you're, you're great. And we're here at St. Francis High School, where you're a senior. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, tell me a little bit about, about yourself. Uh, you, 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 I know you live in, live in the Highlands. I live parents. in the Highlands, born and raised. Yeah, my dad actually grew up in the house that we live in now, so, you know, we go way back. Um, and so I found St. Francis about halfway through my high school career, and it's been wonderful ever since. Um, so this campaign, or my idea of it, started um, when I saw the promo video um, for the official campaign um, movie documentary that's out on Netflix now, and that started circulating on Facebook um, back in about December, January. And the idea that really hit me in a way that I hadn't thought about before is that we hypersexualize women's bodies by covering them. There's nothing inherently sexual or secret about them to make us to make us do that um, and to try to make them a secret. And so um, my friends and I sort of joked around with the idea after we started posting things here and there on Facebook. And um, it wasn't until I started taking a, a women and gender studies class here at St. Francis in the fall that I thought, you know, this is something that we could really be a part of right. and make happen. And, and but we'll, we'll, we'll skip that for just a second, but, mm -hmm. but uh, and you can tell me the story, but I know this, um, this walk that occurred last Saturday. Uh, how many people got involved in that? Uh... So I was in the front uh, okay. leading the procession with a couple of friends, um, men and women, which was wonderful to have that support, people of all genders. Um, but uh, one of the articles that came out said about 400 people were there, which sounds about accurate. I couldn't see the end of the procession, so I'll take the word yeah. for it. Yeah, and so you were at the front, and, and I guess there was a mixture. Uh, we know that um, there were a lot of people watching, right? Uh, there were a lot of people, people a lot watching. Of and that was, of course, something that we were, you know, worried about, but expecting. Um, you know, I try not to focus on the more negative and, and poor intentioned um, comments online. Um, but there were, you know, there was one guy out in his camouflage shirt sitting in a lawn chair watching. He was like, hey, why don't you guys do this every Saturday? Which, <laughs> you know, some people just really have, have no idea or do have an idea and, you know, just... Uh, just Some want to be gross are, anyway. Are, yeah, are gross, yeah, yeah. But I think the good definitely outweigh the bad. Okay. Now you've never been obviously in the media spotlight before. Absolutely um, not. <laughs> so, uh, what 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 was that like for you? Did, I mean, I, I guess you I know you did TV interviews. You did did a lot of a lot of interviews. Uh, yeah. So. Um, my biggest concern was that oh my gosh I'm gonna say you know my same little spiel to all of the all of the people that I interview with and hopefully they'll edit it in a way that everyone says something a little bit different um, so it looks like I know what I'm talking about but um, I started this event on accident I invited 38 of my closest friends you know to say let's do a little a campaign let's make this small if we want to do it bigger in the future we will um, but I forgot to hit the invite only button on Facebook so the next day 400 people were invited which is about what we ended up getting. Um, and then yeah, you say the 400 people was that that was sort of an accident you're saying absolutely yeah yeah um, uh, so it became a public event on Facebook and from there it just sort of blossomed into this bigger you know full out Louisville walk yeah. that we had and how, how long how far in advance of the of the event this was about two weeks uh, two before weeks. Saturday wow. yeah wow. so things travel yeah they, they do the internet does a make things go in viral way. Yeah. It, is, it absolutely does. And I've been really grateful for the media. We ended up having um, a promotional uh, career journal article come out the week before. Um, and then uh, I was interviewed the day of by WDRB, um, WHAS, WLKY, and the Career Journal and Leo did another um, follow-up articles as well. Um, and now here we are. Yeah, well, it made quite a splash. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, of the women who like walk through the thing, uh, I mean, not all of them were topless, and I right. let's make that right. clear. Yes, and one thing that we did have to make absolutely certain was that minors would not be topless at the event because although it's legal for all women and females to be topless in the state, or the Commonwealth of Kentucky rather, um, because of the ostentatious and showy nature of a walk that's meant to grab attention, um, that had to do with violating um, child exploitation and sexual laws, so that was one thing we had to make sure of. But there were a lot of supportive, supportive people there, topless or not, either way. Yeah, yeah, well, it sounds great. Well, so, uh, you know, this was a big event, it, it, it happened, uh, where do you go from here? Right, so I really have thrown myself into this, since it's not something that I meant to do, and I don't claim to have more information or more knowledge than I, than I do, but um, women's rights is something that I'm hugely wanting to be a part of, and so I've gotten in touch. I actually have a meeting next Sunday with a few people who have really shown an interest in this campaign and starting it in Louisville, and we're going to get together and have that very conversation. Where do we go from here? More events. What exactly is the message that we want to send? How um, can we use Louisville for what it is to, to really capitalize on it? Okay, because this is not unique to Louisville. 
No, no. So this is a national campaign, and it was started in New York um, to change public policies by a woman named Lena Esco. And since then, there have been lots of coalitions to spring up all over the U.S. Um, so if you go on a site called Topless, uh, gotopless.org, you can see all the states where it's legal. There are only three where it's not, and then places where it's ambiguous. And then it has a list of cities where it's called like Topless Tested um, to show all the places that this has been done. And you know, this is a safe place for you to for you to do this. Three. States. Three. What are, what are That's those, uh, Utah, which is sort of an outlier, I guess, because no one lives there. Um, Tennessee and and Indiana. So that's interesting because we're sort of in the middle of those two. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. we're right there. So, right. Um, I, I mean, well, what you said in, in that last thing uh, sparked my question. And like, what's the, you know, I, I'm sure you're developing it, but what is the message? What What do you want people to? understand and change. Exactly. So the goal is to de-hypersexualize women's bodies and how this campaign seeks to do that from my personal understanding what I've heard and, and just what the national campaign is about is by desensitizing people to the female body and we're specifically talking about the breasts. So hypersexualization of women's bodies gives people the excuse to slut shame, to victim blame, and then to shun women who are breastfeeding in public, which is using breasts for their biological purpose. So those are um, sort of the offshoots that we're trying to combat and stop. Okay, okay. Well, very interesting, it's a very good cause. Um, let me ask you something about you. You're, I mean, as a high school student, it, how has this uh, you know, affected your life beyond, uh, uh, I, I mean, I know you, you're a high school senior, you think about your future. Um, yeah. has, has it caused you to rethink? Sure, and I, I consider myself sort of free throat, uh, free floater, you know, I don't have there are a lot of things that are important to me, but I just kind of dabble. Um, and so this has really made me um, kind of focus in on the things that are important to me. Um, you know, I've gotten a lot of feedback from all kinds of people over the past week or two about this, and, and I think it's something that I really might want to continue. You know, I told you that um, this gender class that I'm taking right now really sparked that interest in me, um, and I think this is something that I could, as of now, you know, kind of roll with. Yeah, well, I, I, and, and here at St. Francis, uh, I know, uh, uh, you know, I'm guessing it's kind of a, a liberal school. Absolutely, again. this school has been so supportive. Of and it, and that, that your your teachers are all um, all. I guess it comes up in class. Sure, right? sure, and of course this because of the the whole minor um, the minors piece um, cannot be associated with the school. But you know, all of my teachers have come up to me and said, you know, I'm really proud of you for doing this. One teacher. Um, he was at the some of the original walks in New York to try to change public policy. So this has been a great place to foster and culture, um, you know, sure. these ideas that we're rolling with now. Okay. So uh, the senior year, uh, college in your future? Maybe yeah, you violent. know, we're still even uh, finalizing the list, but, um, you know, I've known that I wanted to do small liberal arts somewhere, and just, you know, my mom even said, why don't you take classes that sound cool to you? Um, freshman year and then take it to your counselor and say like, okay, what can I, <laughs> what career can I make out of this? Um, but I just sent my college counselor here um, an email and I was like, you know, let's uh, take the list we have and kind of change it a little bit and see what we can get as far as um, up and coming women's and women and gender studies classes. So okay. I think this is something that I really want to pursue now. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I, I would say not as your advisor, but there's plenty of careers if, you, if you're good at speaking out Absolutely. and, and yeah. supporting a cause. So. So, so good for you. Um, you have also, um, I was going to ask you beyond your, 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 mm -hmm. your college, but um, other reactions that, that, that maybe you got from, from the public. I mean, what was it like walking down that street and, and, and getting all those, uh, I, I wasn't there, I assume there were a lot of different calls, uh, you know, different things people were yelling at you. Of course, of course. Um, and so a lot of the feedback has happened, you know, the walk was, you know, 45 minutes, um, and I think I was just on a high while I was there. You know, one of my friends who was walking next to me just said, I'm in love with the city of Louisville, I'm in love with the people, I'm in love with the world. Um, and that was sort of the feeling, you know, we had a couple women come out of stores or cars and, and flash us and, you know, uh, say really positive things. And of course, there were people with cameras and just sort of gawking. Um, but that's sort of one of the risks that you take and one of the expectations you have when you're trying to desensitize people to something. You have to put yourself out there. Um, and so I guess on a more positive note, one of the really gratifying pieces of this for me has been women and girls and even some men as well who have come up to me in the hallways or on the street um, or even over Facebook, people that I don't know, telling me their very personal reasons for supporting this campaign, whether it's, you know, I have a friend who was sexually abused as a kid and then asked me, you know, what she was wearing and so that goes with the victim blaming and then a whole coalition of, of breastfeeding mothers who, you know, who want to be a part of this now. And so that's 
really made it a lot more real for sure. me. Are there, are there any other causes uh, uh, beyond that? I mean, you have this social media group now, a right. group of activist people. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything else you're interested in talking about? Well, let's see. Um, no, no, I no, guess. It's kind of, no, 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 yeah, yeah. in the middle of this big one, I know. Right, right. Um, and it's all, you know, I've really had to grow up in the past week um, because I've been dealing with a lot of, like, big names, media, and otherwise. And um, I did get one of the really encouraging pieces of, of information I got was a Facebook message from a woman who did the same thing also by accident in New Hampton um, last, uh, last month. And she got in touch with me and she said, hey, this is what to expect. This is where you can go from here. And so she's been sort of my mentor as far as this goes. Um, but uh, she said, you know, one of the, the reasons, or maybe she didn't say this, someone did, one of the reasons that um, uh, we're trying to desensitize people and give women this right back is that there's not a lot of sense of the woman as an independent self. If you put yourself out there wearing whatever clothing, you're gonna get information back about, or thoughts back about what you're trying to send as a message to other people as opposed to what you just want to express and be a part of as yourself. And so a huge part of this event is just for women to feel empowered to claim their own body and their own decisions as far as how they show themselves to the world. All right. Well, uh, Nan, I can't tell you how impressed I am with you and your cause, and, and uh, I really appreciate you taking time to talk to Thank you so much. All right.